Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we will be reacting to a video of a very, very dangerous man-eating cave. Jenny Springs. What? <laughs> Seriously? Somebody... I don't even like to say that. I mean, it's... Somebody sent me an email. Send us an email at info at divetalk.com and said, guys, you need to react to this because I know you dive for Ginny. So... Yeah, it's like one of the most heavily dived caves and probably the main training grounds in Florida, I would say, for most cave divers. Absolutely. And uh, I don't think this is a long video. So okay. let's get to it. In the middle of sweet, idyllic Jenny Springs is a gateway to hell, Fuck. leading to an expansive okay. underwater my cave. Keyboard? <laughs> I mean, I don't even have it. Come, I, I'm sorry. Do you, where's your I'm stopping it because... It's a Have gate you all to seen hell. Jenny you Springs, know that? a gateway to hell. It's for those that don't know, Jenny Springs is in High Springs, Florida. It's perhaps I would say one of the most dived caves in the world in terms of sheer number of people. And I would say most instructors in that area, which are some of the most premier cave diving instructors in the world, choose this cave as a training ground. It's yeah. very heavily lined and marked mapped and well known so this by is the ridiculous. way it's a really bad uh diss on the actual gate to hell which is a place i want to go to it's in turkmenistan did you even know about this no it's pretty cool i'm gonna put a picture or a video or something so people can see it right now how come you didn't say anything about i got a new hat i mean nothing that i just i'm talking about an no, actual know, gate to hell and you're not talking and you're about talking about your hat it's nice right it is nice. Okay, that's all I needed to hear. Let's keep going. Anyway, let me just finish the whole okay. gate to hell. Look it up. I don't remember the exact story, but apparently there was like a gas leak, like a natural gas leak in Turkmenistan, like in the 70s. Okay. And they didn't know how to stop it. Like just out of the ground, gas leaking, natural gas. So somebody had the idea, well, how about we light it on fire? <laughs> and that way the fire will burn the gas. I heard about And this. like within a couple hours, we should be good to go. It's been 50 years and it's still burning. I heard about this. No, we got to talk about that. So uh, That's funny. I actually would love to check that out. But uh, okay. anyway, this is not a gateway to hell. Just By the way, that's not even the entrance. I don't know. I think that's the main I, crack in the run up. You know, that's that little, little area? devil. It's called yeah, little, little devil. devil. Yeah, there is a cave in little devil, by the way, but it's like super tight to get into. And it's not that long. It's like a couple hundred feet. It's experienced divers struggle with. The gateway, located in the middle of an unassuming crystal blue pond, leads to an entire system of underground caves that can span miles. They are the ultimate source of attention for divers. Mm -hmm. The Ginny Springs cave system is the dream location for many of the most experienced scuba divers in the world. Yes. Everything about diving in this area looks staged. The water is too clear to be real. As some divers have called it, there's visibility forever. At Love least it. as long as there is light. The hole Shout is out the to perfect Joe Oceanside, place for experienced way. scuba and cave divers to test their abilities. Who was the guy it's no the surprise then that divers go to do exactly that and ultimately get overwhelmed. On June 14, 2008, 20-year-old student Shannon Lewis went cave diving at Ginny Springs with two friends, both of them also divers. While diving, Shannon experienced difficulties with her equilibrium underwater. This, is Jane, this meant way. that she was not able to ascend and descend at a constant rate. This rate controls how nitrogen from the pressure tank is absorbed into the body's organs and bloodstream. I think this might be the first diver feature on the video. Everybody else has been <coughs> free divers, which is weird. Why not add actual videos of people diving? Well, I'm not even pausing it, even though I have a thought, which is what kind of diver is she? I, it sounds like it's going to elude and build up to a problem that she had. And is we'll she see. a cave diver? Let's see. If these rates change, your blood can be filled with excessive nitrogen, which is what unfortunately happened to Shannon. Okay. Mm. Realizing she couldn't go any deeper, Shannon's friends brought her to the front of the cave, shallower water at only 20 feet deep so she could fix the issue with her suit. While she was working on her suit, her friends dove deeper and deeper. What happened in the minutes following is unknown. All we know for sure is that shortly after her friends left, Shannon was found unresponsive by two passing divers. Mm. I could 20 see feet. her face through her mask, a pair of lifeless eyes staring back at them. They pulled her out of the water and took her mask off. Shannon's lips were blue and she wasn't breathing. She was taken by ambulance to the nearest hospital where she fought for her life, but ultimately lost. 
Now, if that was the only incident to come out of Ginny Springs, we could have an untimely death due to malfunctioning scuba equipment. Or perhaps she was simply in a bit over her head. Is it true that they don't know what happened to her? I, you don't know the answer to this, Gus. Right. I'm saying to you all out there, has there been a follow-up report? Because something sounds very wrong. Well, and the challenge with couldn't... these with these deaths, especially when there's, we don't know what happened, like if she had a heart attack, who knows, is that if you die of a heart attack inside a cave, and Doug Ebersol has said this, it's a cave diving death. It doesn't matter whether it was because of cave diving. Like most people would think that a cave diving death is because somebody drowned, like got lost, drowned, whatever. That's cave diving related. But even if you die of a heart attack and you were on the line, like following the rules, it would still count as a cave diving death, which is kind of unfair. And, you know, he mentions that if you have a heart attack playing golf, nobody's going nobody's to say it's a golfing dead, right? Death. So good point. Yeah, it's unfair. On March 10th of the same year, a 36-year-old Swiss man, Mark Fivey, decided to visit Ginny Springs to test out an experimental rebreather. Hmm. He had done the dive just the previous year, where he had found a new lead through the cave system. Mark had been diving since 1993 and a diving instructor since 2000. In those 15 years, Mark had successfully completed nearly 1,000 dives. He was, quite frankly, one of the most experienced divers in the world. He had traveled With the world to fulfill his passion and had done it. Mark was an extremely smart and calculated diver. He meticulously planned every expedition, leaving nothing to chance. What? Mark went for a solo dive at noon. They're not really showing divers. Though he was configured with a rebreather that yeah. could last up to 10 hours, when he had not returned by 9 p.m., another diver named Corey Mearns went looking for him. Following Mark's path, Corey found Mark unconscious 3,800 feet deep into the cave. Wow. Corey came Blue out of the Hall cave in alone Egypt. and alerted authorities as soon as he reached land. Mark's body could not be recovered until the following day due to darkness and safety concerns for the recovery crew. 3,800 feet into Ginny is a long way there. I mean, the deepest I've been is 3,000 feet. Um, so 3,800 is pretty far. I am disappointed by the fact that all of the footage being used in this video, almost all of it is not from Ginny. And whenever they're featuring actually Ginny on the video, Again, this is one of the most popular cave diving destinations in the world. There's hundreds of hours worth of content from diving at Ginny. Even in our own channel, there's hours of content. So I'm baffled why these channels cannot just search on YouTube for Ginny Springs and just add it. So at least you can see kind of the area or what it looks like where this guy, Mark, I think is his name, mm -hmm. uh, died. Yeah. What I was going to comment on in add on to what you said is let me give some perspective 3800 feet back if gus and i go 2000 feet back on our rebreather we're carrying typically typically two 50 cubic foot steel tanks overfilled so that they're really probably closer to 70s or 80s if we were to go 3800 feet back we would probably cover carry double that amount of gas on our rebreathers Remember, if you've watched previous videos, we're always going to assume that our rebreathers are going to break at the furthest point from the entrance of the cave. So that's a whole lot of gas to go 3,800 feet back. And we actually have a video on this channel. I'm going to link it up here where you can see Woody staging a bottle at Stage Bottle Rock, which is 1,800 feet from the entrance. So again, we try to not go past 2,000 feet without bringing extra gas. So on that dive that we were going to, I think we went to 3,000 or close to 3,000 yeah. on that one. Um, we staged a bottle at 1,800. So the idea is once you do that, you can, you know, technically go 2,000 in because you can always swim to your bottle, which would then take you out to the exit. That's basically kind of how you do it. You stage bottles along the way. Mark's death was quickly dismissed as a drowning because he did not follow one of the cardinal rules of diving. Always bring a buddy. Ginny Springs, naturally, assumes that as long as all divers are paired with a buddy, nothing bad can happen to them. While we know that not to be true because of Shannon Lewis, we also know Mark Fivey is more than skilled enough to handle any such dive on his own. Mark had already concluded that there was no suitable partner for the dives he wanted to do, and as such had grown accustomed to diving alone. You know what I'm struggling with with this video in particular, and I've never struggled with this since mm. we started Dive Talk? This is 
actually the only time I've ever had this thought or this reaction. What's the point of this video? The guy is just rambling on about vague deaths without any follow-up as to why or what his point is. Did they not carry enough gas? Were they not properly trained as cave divers? Does he just want to have like a general message that if you dive in Jenny Springs, you're going to die? It's not really giving anything other than just listen to the rest of it. It's very vague in general. Yeah. He died and he it's went into scary. Jenny Springs. Well, what's okay, but like, Go what's the rest of the body. story? Just, it's like an empty video. The fact of the matter is, anything could have happened to Mark down there. It, see? His rebreather could have malfunctioned, he could have been caught between two surfaces, or even just wasn't paying as much attention as he should have been. Yeah. One diver okay. covered today was young, inexperienced, and had trouble with her suit. The other was a world renowned diver and instructor who was one of the best divers in the business. They died at Jenny Springs only That's a few not months Jenny. apart. Their stories are different, yet no matter how you look at it, that commonality remains. Since Shannon what and Mark's untimely deaths, Jenny. 26 other divers have passed away at Jenny Springs. It's a harbinger of death, a siren song for divers around the world. It cannot be ignored, and all that can be hoped for is that divers take the utmost precautions while there. It could save their life. Jenny Springs is, I just said, one of the most dived caves in the world. So statistically speaking, it probably has higher numbers than other caves. But it's not Jenny that's so dangerous. It's not like it in particular is such an extreme dangerous cave. I mean, you've been to more, if you want to use the word extreme caves, meaning right. tighter or more trickier to Ocean. navigate or, you know, doesn't, ha it's not as well mapped or well known as Jenny. Like it's not that complicated of a cave. So this is just a video that I said for the first time, I'm other than dramatic, dramatic, dramatic effect yeah. on Jenny trying to scare people because it's a popular video. I don't really see the point of this video. Yeah, I, first, I, I don't think 26 people have died since 2010 or whatever it is. I, I don't think that's accurate, but I don't know. For us who dive in Florida caves, I cannot think of another cave system that is more monitored, where the rules are more enforced than Ginny. Line committee, as you know, they're Do all... you show up a little river to dive? Is anybody asking for a card? Are you Nothing. certified? Nothing. Are your tax? No one. At, you just go diving. Little no. River is more dangerous, in my opinion, technically speaking, than Ginny, right? Deeper, in, in deeper, deeper. Just narrow, like corridors, and like, it's just, in my opinion, there's I more agree. places to get wedged than than Ginny. Agree. And at Ginny, they check for everything. Oh, you have a DPV? Do you have a DPV card? Like most of the caves in Florida are either honor system where you just show up and hopefully you're certified or they'll check your card at the door like a jug hole and if you have a card go through Ginny takes time like you have to fill forms and it's in terms of safety i think they're the safest i mean case. the line committee i mean randy thornton has told me about this i would say the line committee of these general cave systems in florida is probably most active in jenny Mm -hmm. Like those lines are checked more than any other cave lines, probably of any cave in the entire world. So that's what I'm saying. What's the point of this video? I'm not really sure. They didn't even show Jenny very much. So, yeah, I like that we got to react like this because I think this one is pointless. And yeah. it's not it's not fair to Jenny Springs is my overall reaction. Yeah. Great place for training. For cave divers, great place for training. For cavern divers, they have a cavern. Mm, yes. If you go on the ballroom side where the cave is graded, that's not common in Florida at all. When you go to a cavern mm. and there has a cave, you can go in the cave and that's how people die. A gin, if you go into the cavern where the ballroom is, graded, right? There's a metal thing you can't go through. Um, so great place. I mean, I, I want to give them props. I personally love Ginny. I don't think people should be scared of going there. I think that people should be scared of going there if they're not certified 
just like they should be scared of going there to any cave if you're not certified. But um, to say that Ginny is a gateway to hell and that all these people, even super experienced divers, have died there, although it might be accurate that experienced divers have died there, doesn't make it more dangerous than any other cave that I know of. And I'm going to go further and actually say it's less dangerous than other caves that we go to if you want to use the word danger as it relates to the cave itself rather than the five rules of cave diving six for us because i don't solo cave dive yeah so let's uh let's let's wrap it up there we, yeah we're in total agreement which is absolutely nice. absolutely so we've had multiple dives at Ginny. as i mentioned there's one where woody's setting up a stage bottle right so if you didn't check that out i'm gonna leave it right here so you can check it out and uh Watch his dive a genie. Barely, Barely made it. Barely made it. Look at this hat.